Welcome to this course where I will show you how you can create cinematic animations in Blender from start to finish. We will create this animation, including some variations of it, and I will share all my tips and tricks I learned over the last few years doing this along the way. In total, there will be seven episodes and I will post a new one every day, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to not miss them. So actually, this course is already one and a half years old and it was a paid course for I think 28 or like 30, 40 dollars on Motion Designer Academy. But the Motion Designer Academy website doesn't exist anymore and so the course was just sitting around in my folder for the past few months. So the course is already over one and a half years old and you can't get it anywhere else. I decided to post it here on YouTube for free. So to everyone who already bought it, I'm super grateful for you, for your support, and I hope the two year head start was worth it for you. And for everyone else, I also hope that you can learn a lot in this course. And yeah, if I talk about something like Motion Designer Academy or a paid course or whatever, um, just ignore that. Um, and yeah, maybe also the Blender version might be an older one, but all of the knowledge I share is still up to date today and there are a lot of valuable stuff I teach in this course. So I hope you will enjoy. If you have any questions, make sure to comment down below or join my free Discord server with over 2,500 active member where you can get feedback on your art, can get help and we also host monthly challenges to improve your skills. I hope you can enjoy and let's get started with the introduction and the first episode. My name is Florian Flammer and I'm a 3D artist. I started out over four years ago and I specialize in cinematic 3D animations. Over the years, I have worked on some amazing projects for big music artists and brands, gaining extensive experience in 3D, but also on the business side of it. I will teach you what took me years and hundreds of tutorials to learn all in this course. First, we'll go over the creative process, discussing how to overcome a creative block and generate the most creative ideas. Then we will create this cinematic animation together step by step. While doing this, I will show you my process, guiding you on how to handle large Blender scenes and also perform some post-process work on it. In the end, I will also discuss the business side of freelancing in the industry and I will provide you with tips and tricks how you can attract your first clients and improve your income in 3D. By the end, you will have your own unique animation. And by the way, if you're a beginner, don't worry, I will go over everything step by step. So if you wanna take your 3D animations to the next level, this is the course for you. In this first episode, I want to talk about the basics and the creative process that go into creating a professional cinematic 3D animation. I will take you step by step with me through this process, so let's get to it. So first of all, we need to get an idea, but before you can get an idea, you need to figure out the following three things. The first thing to figure out is if you already have inspiration or do you have some guidelines from a client or a mood board or whatever. Then the second point is if it can be achieved on your PC or laptop. So if you have a really crazy idea, you'll also have to think about that part because else you're gonna start and then it's not possible and you get frustrated. So also make sure to think about that. And in the beginning, it might be a little bit harder to like guess what you can do with your PC or not, but you will get better at it. And I will also give you some tips and tricks how you can improve that skill. So yes, but still, that's also something to think about. And then the third thing is like in what channel direction or medium you want to go. Do you want to create a cinematic animation for YouTube in 16 to 9 or do you want to create like a viral TikTok or reel or is it for a product animation, an ad or whatever, but just figure that out so you know the general direction. If you know these three things, you can start thinking about the idea. This is very individual, so it might be a little bit different for you, but I can share what works for me and how I can come up with some creative ideas and what you can do if you have a creative block or don't know any further. First of all, try to create a general mood board or a reference board to gather all your inspiration you have for this piece. I like to use a program called Pure Ref. With that, you can just drag different images together that fit this project or that inspired you. And in my opinion, you should not look for the perfect inspiration that you can copy one by one, but rather you should be looking for color combinations that you like and also want to have, 
or like a composition that inspired you or like just a general style you want to achieve in your piece. This mood board can be really rough and it doesn't need to be perfect or anything, but it's just here to guide you through the process so that the animation in the end is more consistent. Maybe you have also experienced this, but I had it a few times that I had a great idea, but in the end the animation looked way different. Maybe it wasn't really bad, but if I had done a mood board back then, it would have just helped me to visualize what I have in mind a little bit better, so the final output that I generate, like the animation, is more consistent and matches up with what I had in mind in the beginning. And maybe also worth mentioning, if you work for a client or you work in a team, this mood board or this art guide might already be there, so you don't have to create it by your own. Now it's time for your imagination. Take your time, think about a shot you want to create or the character that will be in it or the environment. And yeah, just think about it until you have a solid idea in mind. This is the most fun part for me because I can unleash my whole creativity. But sometimes it's also easier set than to actually think about something and it can be really difficult. And that's what most people call a creative block. When you just can't get a better idea or any idea at all. So I just want to share some tips how I can overcome a creative block and yeah, just what helps me in that situation. So to overcome a creative block or if you already have an idea but you aren't satisfied with it and you can't think of anything else, look for boredom. I know this sounds super uninteresting but it's proven that a human can be most creative when he is bored. I 100% agree with that and also have many examples how that worked for me to get a new creative idea. But very important, you don't have to lock yourself into your room for 8 hours and stare at the wall or whatever, but I just want to encourage you to take a walk for an hour or maybe drive your bicycle or go earlier to bed and think about it before you sleep. And yeah, there are many different ways you can like just cut out a few hours from your day or maybe a few minutes, however long you take to get the idea. And yes, it really works. So I can 100% suggest. But whatever you do, make sure to keep your phone away and every other distraction. So then when you're at your favorite silent place, because your brain also doesn't like to be bored. So it will give you some cool ideas and suddenly the ideas will pop into your head. And honestly, I don't really know how it works, but it just works for me. <laughs> so I want to encourage you, make sure to try that out if you have a creative block. Another thing I hear a lot is to look for inspiration when you have a creative block. But in my experience, it doesn't help me to look at inspiration to find my own idea. But I think inspiration is very important and you should always look for inspiration before or throughout your life in general. But to find an actual idea or your own original creative idea, like I already said, go to a calm, silent place or take a walk and let the ideas come to your mind. And with that you can get interesting but also your own original ideas that might be inspired by something you saw a few weeks ago, but it's still like your own idea because you don't just saw something and thought it's cool and I want to copy that, but you had it for like you had the idea on your own. And also at that point, like the idea doesn't have to be 100% thought out in your head or 100% perfect, but yes, it just have to be like a rough initial idea that we can make further exploration on. So now we are at the point where you have the idea and now it's really important to write it down. I don't know how many times I had an idea when I laid in bed and then I didn't wrote it down and then forgot again. Honestly, I don't want to know. But yeah, just write the idea down. So you can also make your mind free to think about new things and you don't forget it. And yes, so make sure to write it down. So then once you write it down, maybe a few hours later or a few days later when you have some time, if you're good at sketching or drawing, make sure to sketch it out. Maybe make a little sketchboard or whatever. Or if you're not really good at drawing like myself, you can also roughly block out the scene in Blender. We'll go over that in the next episode how I do it. But yes, you can just roughly block it out. Maybe place a camera in the scene, line up a rough composition. But that just helps me to refine the idea more or see what's actually possible in the real world. Because sometimes our ideas are not really possible in the physical world or in the 3D software. 
So yes, that just helps me, but this shouldn't take more than an hour or half an hour. It's just like a really rough block out to, yes, refine the idea more in your head. So the last thing that really helps me before we actually start to create the animation is to have a big checklist with everything I usually do in my animations. This especially helps with big projects or projects that span over a longer amount of time and it's just to make sure that you don't forget anything. Like even if it's just a simple render setting you forgot, it can cost you huge amounts of render time or of actual time you could spend working on other projects or if it's an idea you had but you have to wait until later until you can implement it, it just helps you to keep some structure in your project. So I already have a general checklist template that I use with the most important things I do on every render. And you can use that too. You can download it for free from a Google Drive link. I attach or I attach the file directly, I'm not sure yet. But yes, just copy it for yourself and maybe you want to do some adjustment or some tweaks that work for you. And yes, just add your own stuff to it. With these last two points, with the blocking out and the checklist and everything, we were already at the beginning of creating our scene, but that's for the next episode. This episode was very theoretical, but it was an important foundation to create our animation. But in the next episode, we will get practical and actually start to create our animation step by step. So I'm really looking forward to it. So see you there in episode number two.